I spent the first five years of my meteorology career forecasting the weather for the great state of Alaska. And I know what you're thinking, how hard can that be? All you have to do is say, it's gonna be cold. And you'd be wrong. At one-fifth the size of the continental United States and having at least six major distinctive climates, not to mention the millions of microclimates, you could be talking 50 below wind chill in one area, driving rains in another, and peaceful sunshine and warmth in another. Can I get a menu? Thank you. But you'd also be right. To live in Alaska is to become intimately involved and familiar with cold weather. And of all the types of winter weather I saw in my tenure in Alaska, from massive blizzards to driving rain, and my least favorite, and the only kind of weather that I saw actually cancel schools in Alaska, was freezing rain. You know freezing rain. That weather that came our way last week and coated every house, power line, and highway with a sheet of ice. Yeah, that kind of sucked, didn't it? But considering how many times I've been asked in the last week how it can be below freezing on the ground and yet raining in the sky, I decided it was time to break down what is actually happening using something close to home. Beer. Well, let's backtrack first. The reason most people don't understand how it could be below freezing on the ground and raining up above is because under normal circumstances, the higher you go in elevation, the colder it gets. Think tropical beach versus mountaintop. But cold air is actually more dense than warm air and has a tendency to sink, whereas warm air is actually lighter and has a tendency to rise. Okay, let's get back to the beer. Waiter? In a drink called a black and tan, a lighter colored but denser beer like a lager is poured in first. This will represent the cold air. And then a darker but less dense beer is poured over the top, representing the warmer air. And that leaves us with one tasty visual for getting us closer to explaining freezing rain. Mmm, thank you. You know, what we have in this glass is actually very similar to when we have an inversion in Central Oregon. You know, like those days we had in town right before the freezing rain came where it was cold and foggy and yet sunny and warmer up at the mountain? Okay, now imagine another cold layer comes in over the warmer air and it begins to snow. That snow falls through the warmer air and turns into rain. The rain then falls into the cold layer, hits the ground that's below freezing, and freezes on contact. In many freezing rain scenarios, the surface is below freezing, but the roads and sidewalks are dry. But in our case, when the freezing rain started, it not only fell into a layer below freezing, but onto a surface that was already covered in frozen precipitation. But what kind of little did I know would this be if I didn't share one mostly unknown, but massive detail related to freezing rain? One of Canada's biggest natural disasters was caused by freezing rain. In this case, nearly four inches of ice accumulated, and one cubic foot of ice weighs 57 pounds, five times more than the wettest, heaviest snow. That weight on the power grid caused over 1,000 transmission towers to collapse, leading to four million people without power, 34 fatalities, and the largest deployment of military personnel in its country's history since the Korean War. In our area, the freezing rain mainly led to slips and slides and accidents, and people mostly staying home to enjoy a low-density or high-density beverage of their choice. For Central Oregon Daily News, I'm Scott Elmas.